Last week we talked about salvation. Why do it? So I don't run into things. Don't leave this one on, guys. The green one. Go. Church, why do it? Why do it? You got a Bible today, turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, verse 25. Church isn't as important as it used to be to people. And I think a lot of people are more appreciative of it right now since it got shut down for months for a lot of people. And so, and there are some churches that are still shut down right now. Where people, people are not able to go to church. And I know that I talk to different people throughout the week and they ask me, well, well is your church open? Yep. That we've been open a couple of months now. Really, our church still isn't open. And man, am I missing it. Man, am I missing it. And I'll tell them, I said, well, you can go ahead and come to our church till, till yours opens. You're welcome to come. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome to come. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I, talk, I talked to a few people uh, yesterday. I did the uh, wedding for Tyler and Allison. Uh, awesome, awesome wedding. That was fun. Um, what a sweet, sweet couple both of them are. So we had a good time at the wedding. Uh, and some people came up to us afterwards, and they're like, uh, uh, you made you made this wedding fun. I said, well, I like to. I said, I've, been, I've been to a few Catholic weddings. I felt like I was at a funeral. <laughs> so I like I like to make my weddings fun. They're like, well, is this is this how church is? Yup. So we have we have we have fun at church. Pastor who always told me when you come to church you ought to laugh and you ought to cry. You ought to laugh and you ought to cry. More people don't need to be in church. Hebrews ten twenty five. Let's look at it. It says here, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. What that verse basically says is this, don't skip church. Don't skip church. It's important. Don't skip church. I was talking to a guy one time, and uh, this was at the gym in Battle Creek. They've been saying again and again and again about giving National Baptist a try. This is this when I was a youth pastor there. And he came up to me one day, and I could tell he was in a bad mood. And he said, uh, well, I'll tell you what. If you can show me in the Bible one verse that says I need to go to church, then I'll be in your church. So what do you think I did? I took him to Hebrews 10.25. Showed it to him on my phone, read it to him. Now he still didn't come to church. Surprise, surprise. Still don't come to church. It says in this passage, don't skip church. You might say, well, Pastor Matt, I don't think that being a Christian means that you have to go to church. No? No? Does going to church make you a Christian? No? No, it doesn't. If you have that mindset, I totally agree. Because going to church won't make you a Christian. No more than me standing out in one of the fields in Springport with a shovel yelling, vroom, vroom, makes me a combine. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm not sure what a combine does. I think it cuts stuff down. Does it? it cuts stuff down. Right. I don't own a truck and I don't farm, so the parts of me that don't match up with Springport. <laughs> but it's true. Does going to church make you a Christian? Absolutely. Not going to church won't make you a Christian, but I will tell you the truth with something, and this is true. If you don't go to church, you won't be the Christian God wants you to be in every aspect. Well, I disagree with that. Well, then you're disagreeing with the Word of God. If you don't go to church, you won't be the Christian God wants you to be as a whole in every aspect of your life. That's why God wants you in church. Baffles me. Baffles me. Why wouldn't anybody want to be a Christian? I talked about it last week. We talked about how you get peace with God. When you finally give your heart to Christ, you have peace with God. You have a purpose. You have a reason to get up in the morning because you have a purpose in life. You might not have had a purpose 
But man, when you give your heart to Christ, you finally have a purpose. You have power over addictions. You have power over struggles. The moment the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you now have the power to handle things you wouldn't normally be able to handle or maybe try to handle them on your own your entire life and you couldn't. But now because of God and the Holy Spirit within you, you are able to handle those problems. You have the power of prayer. You have access to the throne of God. I talked about it earlier. Man, I'm Pastor Matt, I feel like I don't have anybody to talk to. I feel like I feel like I'm 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 all alone in this world and no one hears me. God always hears you. Hears you. You have the power of prayer. You have the power to praise. You have the power to praise. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life when you've given your heart to Jesus Christ. You find a way to find good in everything. You find a way to find joy even in the midst of struggles. You can still praise Him. I talked about this last week, one of my favorites. You get, you get possessions laid up for you up in heaven someday. Oh, that's so selfish to have that mindset. Well, wham, wham, wham. I love it. All these good things I do for the kingdom down here, I'm going to get rewarded for it someday. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. And then the biggest one we talked about last week is that you have the promise of everlasting life. Promise of everlasting life. Life on here is short. <coughs> life is short. 60, 70, 80 years, and then you're gone. Well, when you give your heart to Christ, you have an eternity in heaven. What a promise. What a promise. So I don't know why people don't give their heart to Jesus Christ. But once you do, God wants you in church. That is what Hebrews said there. Don't skip a church. Don't miss church. Don't miss it. Church in this piece of scripture is made up of two Greek words, ak and kalia. Ak and kalia. Ak is a Greek word that means to call, and kalia means out of. Out of something. So what this is literally saying is this. <clears throat> I'm calling you out of what you were and where you were at. I'm calling you to something better. You were a part of the world, and now I'm calling you out of that. And now I'm calling you into something that will give you a purpose, and that's being a part of church, being a part of the church body. You were a part of something, he's calling you out of it to something better. God has put a call out to the world that when you become a Christian, start becoming a part of the church, be involved in the church. It's important. When you come to the foot of the cross, you heard the call. Many of us can think back to that time that we heard the call for the first time. Our entire life had been chaos. We didn't have a purpose. We didn't have peace. We didn't have all those things I talked about. And we were called out of that, and we gave our hearts to Christ. And now God's saying this. Listen, I called you to me. Now I'm calling you to the church. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. When you came today... Whether or not you realized it, and I talked about it a couple times, you are now in a divine presence. Yes. Amen. God is here right now. Because we're in church. And we've assembled together to praise his name. I'm here to tell you right now, God is in our midst right now enjoying what we're doing in this building. He loves it. Amen. He loves it. <coughs> I can't tell you the number of people I talk to and they... And they will come to church maybe once, once every three or four months, and they'll walk out and, Pastor Matt, oh man, I needed that. That was great. I need to be in church more. Oh, three months later, I see him. Three months later, I see him. It's not about having numbers in church. That is not what it's about. I don't care about that. What I care about is making sure people have access to church. Because of what it can do in their lives. Matthew 6, 18. It says this. <clears throat> and I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now there's five quick things I want you to write down in your bulletin. Five quick things. A, I'm going to break down some of these words. A, will. Will. The word will in there says that we have a divine purpose. We have a divine purpose. We are here for a reason. 
We have a purpose to be in church. We have a purpose. Why are we here? Because God wants us here. We have a purpose. B, build. That's a divine program. We're called to build the church. We're talk, we are called to build the church. Now, am I talking about the building out back? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm not talking about literally building. We're talking about building the church. We are called to add numbers to the church. Once again, not so we can say, well, I had 400 people in church on Sunday. How many people came to your church? Oh, really? Only, oh, only 100? <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. We're called to build the church. We are, we are called to get people to come and be a part of this so that they can give their hearts to Christ and so they can grow as saints. We're called to build the church. The word my, this is a divine possession. What does that mean? This church is yours. This church is yours. This is yours. You guys are a part of this. This isn't Pastor Matt's church. This isn't Elder Ladd or Elder Craig or, or Elder Darren or Elder Greg's church. This is your church. This is yours. Take pride in it. This is, this is, this is yours. Every little thing we do in this church, you guys are a part of this, and I love it. I love it. People that come and visit this church tell me again and again and again, man, well, uh, Leah, Leah and Tim, Leah and Tim that visited, they're going to be coming back next week. It was that little redhead I had to stand up and I gave her five bucks for telling everybody how strong I am. She's a genius. <laughs> Leah, I talked to her, uh, I talked to her a couple days later and she's like, that church feels like a family. We have not been in a church like that that felt like a family. You know why? Because you guys know this is your church. This is our church. And it's awesome. It's awesome. Church, we are a divine people. Do you realize how important you are to God as being a part of the church body? Just, just, just how important you are in God's eyes to do what needs to be done in this world when you become a part of the church body. You are, you are a divine people. You are so important to him when you are a part of this and you're growing the kingdom. He loves it. He loves it. And he, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's a divine power. That's a divine power. God has given us the power and the ability, once again, through the Holy Spirit, to do awesome things for the kingdom. Because we're part of the church body. One Christian can do some pretty amazing things, but a church body can change a community. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it right here in Springport. And it's not Pastor Matt making an impact, it's the church body making an impact in Springport. And it's unbelievable to see people noticing that something's happening. And a lot of them can't figure it out. There's some awesome stuff going on. They can't figure it out. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's God working through this church body. Amen. And it is cool to see. Cool to see. When you walk into church, you walk into the house of the living God. And he died so that we could put this together. That's why he shed his blood and died on the cross. So that our sins could be forgiven, and so we could put together stuff like this, so more people could give their heart to Christ. It's pretty awesome that we can meet here. That we have the freedom to meet here. So I'm going to give you guys three reasons, three reasons why you need to come to church. Three reasons why you need to come to church. And uh, Craig Ward is not here today. He's always complaining about me going over. It's looking like we're going to be early today, so please let him know. That one Sunday he was gone, we got out on time. Hopefully. Number one, preparation. God's preparing you to be like Jesus. That's one of the reasons why we come to church. God is preparing you to be like Jesus. Ephesians 4.11 says this. 
And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now, what does that mean? When I'm preaching up here on Sundays, I am instructing you and I'm instructing myself. Now, many people say, Pastor Matt, I love your sermon. And I, and I say it a lot. I never preach on anything unless I need to hear it too. That's why I preach on stuff. If I'm struggling with something, I preach on it. You know why? Because I'm a lot more passionate about stuff when I'm preaching to myself. But when you come to church at Springport Bible, I assure you, you will be taught out of the Word of God. And the reason why we teach you out of the Word of God is so that your goal, as every Christian's goal should be, is to be Christ-like. To be grown in our faith and to become more Christ-like. That should be the goal of every Christian. So when you come to church on Sundays, when you come on Wednesday night to Darren's Bible study, when you come on Wednesday night to my new Bible study, guess what? The reason why we're teaching is so that you can become more Christ-like. It's not to make you feel good. It's not to, it's not, it's not to stroke your ego and tell you more and more fuzzy things that just think happy thoughts and you'll be a great Christian. No, that's not why we do it. We do it because we want you to be challenged and to become more Christ-like and to evaluate our lives and change things that need to be changed. When you come to this church, you will be taught out of the Word of God. Now, we've got a decent amount of young people coming to church now. I love it. I love it. And I love how they sit up towards the front. I love that. Love that. I love it. I... I I've had some of the older people tell me, they're like, I just, I think it's great on some Sundays I'll walk in, the pastor Matt, the first three rows on that one side would just be packed with teenage kids. And I just, and I just love how, I, I, I just love how you talk to them and you, and you interact with them and this and this and this. And you know why? Because there's a lot of older people sitting in here today and they like it that we've got kids in here sitting up front. You know why? Because they want you to learn not to do the dumb things that they did. Amen. 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 I was going to ask for an amen, but I got one anyway. <laughs> some of you people sitting in here today, including the guy preaching, did some pretty stupid things before I gave my heart to Christ. So that's why it's great that we got teenage kids coming here and junior high kids sitting in church. You know why? Because you need to prepare yourself so you don't do the dumb things we did. And look back and say, oh, I, I, I wish I would have known that to do, do, do that. Well, too late for some of us. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. See, some of you are living proof why it's great to learn young to prepare yourself for life. To prepare yourself for life so that you don't do some of the dumb things that we've done. That's why we teach truth, to prepare you for the world, to prepare you for life. A lot of the people in this church want you to get the lesson that they didn't. The object of this church is to prepare you is to prepare you. The world is nuts, isn't it? Yeah. The world is nuts right now. It's, it, gets, it gets crazier by the day. And for young kids, it's like I will be talking to some junior high kids and like all of a sudden it'll hit me. I was talking to Dallas Hibbelmeyer. Uh, Allison and Dallas had to give me a ride from the football game in reading because Gage separated his shoulder in the, in the, at the I think start of second quarter. So Ange had to take him to Hillsdale, get his shoulder popped back in. So Allison and Dallas gave me a ride into Hillsdale Hospital for reading, and I'm listening to Dallas in the back seat. Man, I that started to ramble. Can he? Yeah, yeah. Man, he goes on and on and on, talking, rambling on about stuff. And it hit me, knowing that I was going to preach on this. What, what, is, what is the world going to be like when Dallas is my age? Hit me. What is, what, is, what is the world going to be like when Dallas is 48, 49 years old? It's crazy now. What is it going to be like then? 
Larry Dow sitting in the back seat, I'm thinking about this sermon, I'm thinking it's so important that we prepare these kids. Because you think it's bad now. Oh, watch out. So we need to get people, we need to get kids ready. We need to prepare them. That's why it's important to have the kids in church. That's why it's important. Stand up, young lady. Yep, I'm pointing at you. Your name, please. Kendra Nesquire. Kendra. Kendra and Noel are going to be working with the youth group. Kendra and Noel are going to be working with the youth group moving forward, going into the new building. They're going to be doing some fun stuff. Kendra, Kendra and Noel are going to be contacting some of the kids, the junior high and high school kids, and get stuff lined up and ready. And you know what? Shame on you if you don't send them. You know why? Because they're preparing the kids. They're preparing them. That's why we have church for the kids to prepare them. So utilize it. Utilize it. Another, another reason that we prepare is so you learn what good and bad choices are. So that you learn. I'll give you an example of it. See here. Stand up. Go and take this. Doesn't matter what happens here today, are you still going to love me? Not really. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Is, is the his mic on, the green one? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, are you, are you uh, married right now? No. No, okay. Um, do you go to Isle of Yes. Yes, okay. All right, all right thank you. All right, Let's see here. Uh, here you yep, stand up, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay? Doesn't matter what happens here today, you're still going to love me, right? You're still going to keep coming to church? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, uh, are, you, are you married right now? No. Okay. Uh, let me see. Do you go to Alba? Do you have a boyfriend? Yes. Okay. All right. Is he sitting next to you? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Potter, stand up. <laughs> no. Uh, do you go to or did you did you go to Springport High School? Yes. You did. Okay. All right. Um, are you uh, married yet? No. No. Are you glad about that? <laughs> <laughs> Certain type of response. Somebody, somebody's going to be really happy when they say it. Stand up, young man. Okay. Do you go to Springport schools? Sometimes. <laughs> uh, do you like hunting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, is your is your mom a uh, famous state rep? Um, I want to just say she's. Amish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, let me see here. Let's see what I got in my pocket. Okay. Here's a dollar for you. Here you go. Okay. I'll take the way. Here's a dollar for you. All right, got five dollars right here. Now I'm going to tell you what I was looking for. I was looking for one of the kids to say yes, sir, to one of my questions. So I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, please. Am I your favorite pastor? Yes, sir. <laughs> say it again, right into the mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here's five bucks. <laughs> Now, that's why I asked some of you guys if you were going to leave if you got upset with me today because I knew some of you weren't going to get the five bucks. <laughs> See, at church, we want to teach people that when you do something good, that you are rewarded. That you are rewarded for it. And that there's consequences for choices. 
So if if some of those kids would have said yes, sir, right away, guess what? I would have had to get with you after church and find more five bucks. <laughs> Except I just I just kind of had a hunch it was going to be yes and yeah. So we encourage people to understand that every choice you make has an outcome of some sort. The church prepares you with that. You realize that, don't you? You realize that. So we teach stuff out of the Word of God so that at a young age and an old age, everybody here understands choices have consequences, good and bad. The world tells you, do what you want. And whatever happens, happens. Live life to its fullest. Do whatever you want. Church teaches you and the Bible teaches you everything you do has a consequence of some sort. We want our kids to learn that right now instead of when they're in the middle of the storm. That's why we prepare people in church. That's why people need to be in church. To get you ready and prepare you. Every morning when I get up, I pray the Lord's Prayer. And my favorite part of it is, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm glad every day when I get up, I don't know what's going to happen that day. I'm glad. Because there are some days where if I knew what was going to happen, I wouldn't get out of bed. Amen? Amen. We just stay in bed. Oh, I know, I know what's going down today. I don't want any part of it. So every morning when I get up and I pray that prayer, I tell the Lord to stop and remind me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I have no idea what's going to happen from day to day to day. But I want the Lord to get me ready and prepare me for that day. Being in the Word of God and being in church gets my mind right that whatever comes with come, comes at me throughout the day, I am prepared for because of something I learned out of the Word of God, something I learned in church. That's one of the biggest reasons why we do what we do is to prepare you for life. Prepare you for life. That's why you're in church. Number two, performance. Performance for the work of the ministry, for the work of the ministry. Ephesians 4.12 tells us this. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's another reason why we need to be in church. Because if you're not in church, we can't get stuff done. With, without you being a part of the church body, we can't accomplish everything God wants us to accomplish for his kingdom without you being a church. There's a lot of gifted people in here. Some of you not maybe singing. I was, uh, I, was, I was joking with Elise Rainey last night at the wedding reception. She was talking about how she was going to be gone today, and I said, well, I, said, I, guess, I guess I'll just have to sing. She's like, oh, really? I said, I don't, I don't want to take away everybody else's gifts because I have so many. <laughs> but... If I got to do it, at least I got to do it. And the truth of the matter is this: I can't sing. I can I can sing Sinatra, but that but but I just I just talk sing those. I don't actually sing them, if you know what that means. But I'm not gifted at singing, so we have people that sing. We have people that sing. And there's all sorts of gifts, but one of my favorite, one of my favorite that the Bible talks about is called helps. Helps. Some of you know that, some of you don't. That, in my opinion, is one of the greatest gifts people can give to a church is just helps. You're just helping and serving. I saw on Facebook this morning and yesterday how Lauren Betts, because of his cancer treatments, he has, he has a big barn that had to go up. So I can't tell you the number of people from this awesome community that showed up at his house, put down the foundation for him, and framed that heart. You know why? Because that helps. You're just serving and helping. And it's awesome. And that's great to see in the community, but the fact of the matter is this. We need you in church. You should be in church because we need help. 
We need people serving in some way, shape, or form. I think it's awesome. Sarah Schreiber. We have that new clothing closet that we're taking over. If you saw the article in the flashes, there's a big article in the flashes about us taking it over from the Methodist Church over there on 99. So we're taking that over as we go into the new building. We are going to be the clothing closet. And people are going to show up a couple times a month and they get free clothing for their family. So Angela had been talking about it for a month. She's like, well, I don't know who to really have. I don't know who to have to. I just, I just, I just need to start praying. And Sarah Shriver said, hey, I'm interested in helping out with that. So Angela and her, they met, and they talked, and they went through the building, and they were talking about logistics and this and this and this. And Angela came home afterwards, and she goes, oh, the Lord sent me the person to run it. It's Sarah. It's Sarah. Sarah's in charge of it. I thought, I thought maybe that I'd be in charge of it. But now that I was around Sarah, Sarah's in charge of it. You know why? Because Sarah's serving. She's helping. She's helping. Dean Dyer is taking over for the security team going into the new building. We're going to have a team that watches the church during service, keeps an eye on things. And Dean seems very organized with stuff such as that. He seems very detailed. And he seems very intent on making sure that as we go to that new building, that we're safe as a church body, especially with the world we're living in. So, you know what? I told Ange, I said, huh? Oh, Dean's in charge of it. You know why? He's serving. And then he also came up to me and said, you know what? I was wondering who's currently cleaning the church, because if I'm doing the security team and overseeing that, I should probably help clean the church. Praise the Lord. He's out. Praise the Lord. He can't do it at home. He doesn't do it at home. I'll pray about that first. Dean serving the Lord so much more important. <laughs> but but I I could go on and on and on. We got Mike Tabor who wants to be a part of the uh, security team. We've got Matthew Bell who wants to be part of that security team to keep an eye on our church, keep us safe so we can enjoy service. We've got teachers that have started stepping up, knowing that we're going to have more classrooms. You know what you guys are? You're servants. You're helps. And it adds to the ministry of this church. If you're not here, we can't do everything we need to do. So you need to be in church. You need to be in church. I think it is so awesome to see people starting to step up, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. But guess what? As this church grows, we're going to need more. So just start praying, Lord, where do you want me to serve at Springport Bible Church? Start praying that. Do not, do not pray, Lord, I hope somebody fills that position. Say, Lord, what position do you want me in? Because we can't do it without you. Can't do it without you. And our last one, number three, protection. This church is here for your protection and for my protection. Ephesians 4.14 says this, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. What does that mean? You come to church so you're not Biblically illiterate. That's why you come to church. I really, really hope that when I do my sermons, you don't just say, well, Pastor Matt said it, so it must be true. Because he's so wise at 48 years old. He's so biblically knowledgeable. I just trust everything that comes out of his mouth. Would you please tell that to my wife? <laughs> I hope that when you hear a sermon on Sunday, you say, I can't wait to get back home and look at some of that scripture during the week that Pastor Matt talked about, because I want to learn more about what was talked about on Sunday. I want to, I want to dive deeper. I want to, I want to, I want to get into the Word of God more. The reason why you come to church, and I promise you this, we will always teach out of this. It will never be my opinion. It will never be what I think the Word of God says because I've got my own translation. 
This is God's word from front to back. Every word still is applicable today, no matter what. And you will always be taught out of this. I get a lot of emails from wackadoodles. <laughs> a lot of emails. <clears throat> I've been getting this email, I decided to print it out. It's from some, I don't know, people are cool. <coughs> they sent me a prayer rug. You have to print it off, it's more of a piece of paper instead of a rug. <laughs> but they sent me a prayer rug. Hmm. So, I'm going to try it out today. So the directions are, I had put it down on the floor. I got a bad knee, so I'm going to go down very slowly. And I'm going to put my knee on the prayer rug. This is what it says i got to do. It says if I kneel on the prayer rug and pray, then I'm going to get strength. I'm going to get spiritual blessings. I'm going to get true love. I've already got that. I'm going to make that crystal clear. I'm good to go in that area. I'm going to get happiness in caring friends. I'm going to get good health. I'm going to get money. I'm going to get great joy. I'm going to have a very happy family life. And I'm going to get miracle healing. I'm going to get wisdom. I'm going to get peace. And I'm going to get a return of a loved one. As long as I can pick which loved one. <laughs> I'm going to get financial help and prosperity. I'm going to get willpower. I'm going to get a good loving companion. I thought that goes along with I've already got somebody I love. Um, I'm going to get spiritual guidance. I'm going to get protection from evil. I'm, I'm, magically, I'm going to get salvation just from kneeling on this prayer rug. Uh, let me see. I'm going to get a secure future and a good job. Uh, and then, oh, the healing didn't work. <laughs> Sound like my knee just broke in half. But I went on and on and on about this prayer rug reading it. And I finally got to the end, meat and potatoes. It says the part of kneeling on the prayer rug is you gotta send in a thousand dollars. And then all the magic happens. <laughs> and there's a lady that even had a testimony. She said, I sent in a thousand. My back was healed, and I received ten thousand dollars from a family friend. So this is basically an investment. <laughs> and, <laughs> and here's one woman who said she got a brand new house for kneeling on the paper rug. Got a house given to her. Well, I'm here to tell you that is a load of crap. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of people believe that. A lot of people believe if they kneel on the magic piece of paper and they send in a thousand dollars and money comes raining from heaven, all your ailments are gone. You can do. You can do jump ropes, and you can do somersaults, and you can do, oh man, everything. Houses are given to you. Can you believe that? Well, I better, I better follow what that guy's saying. That's all such a bunch of baloney that it blows my mind. But you know what? A lot of people get stuff like that. They're not in a church that preaches truth. They're not in a church that preaches the entirety of, of the word of God. And all of a sudden, they get something like that, and they think it's true. They think it's true. So they'll do it. They'll do it. It's crazy. One of the reasons why you're in church is to protect you from the garbage that is out there spiritually. There's a lot of garbage out there spiritually. Robert Tilton. You ever heard of Robert Tilton? Oh, he was a famous televangelist. And he could heal you right through the TV. And he would flat out say, if you send in $100, a thousand will be coming back your way. He was making $85 million a year. Finally, the IRS took him down. There was a big thing on 2020, $85 million a year. He had four, four, four or five planes and six or seven houses and a secret account in the Caymans. On and on and on, 85 million. Everybody bought into it. You know why? Because they weren't in church learning truth. 
they were listening to lies on a TV station. That's why you need to be in church, in a church that preaches truth. People get fooled easy. People get fooled easy. Years ago, we were down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee on a mission trip. I was uh, about a year into my salvation. And it really hit me just how easily people are fooled. We're walking in downtown Gatlinburg. There's a real good pancake place right on, right, right on the main strip there. All I have is the greatest pancakes in the world. And they have the, <coughs> kind of that hangout area there right around the pancake place and the stone walkways. It's really, really nice. One of the kids we brought on the mission trip was Kevin Pratt. Kevin Pratt played forward for um, Concordia, Concordia University. Real good basketball player, graduated from Gaul Lake. Kevin was about six foot nine, really athletic looking, but not a D1 player. So he is at Concordia. He, he looks like an absolute stud, so he's out there. And I said, Kevin, I got a couple other guys to do it. I said, let's act like you're a famous NBA player, see if we can get everybody to buy into it. He's like, all right. So we take out our cameras, and it, it's, it's packed in downtown Gatlinburg. And I'm standing out there, and I go walking down the main street. And, and I go, holy cow, that's Kevin Pratt! Now, this was long before cell phones, so nobody could bring up stuff on their phone to check and verify stuff. I'm like, that's Kevin Pratt. He plays for the Atlanta Hawks. And everybody's like, what? And they're taking out their camera. We had this group of about 40 people around Kevin Pratt. Now, this is a college, or this is a mission trip, so I know this is terrible to do on the mission trip. I will never do this with your kids. <laughs> but all these people were complete. Kevin is standing there, he's putting his arm around these girls that would never talk to him in a million years if their mother played for the Atlanta Hawks. And his arm around these girls, oh, Kevin Pratt from the Atlanta Hawks. And we had this huge group of people around there. Finally, Pastor Tim, Pastor Mike, come walking out. They're like, what is going on? <laughs> They're like, hey, it's Kevin Pratt from the Atlanta Hawks. They're like, Rody, did you start this? <laughs> I did. I did. I apologize. But it was great. And I think sometimes if, if people are going through pictures from years ago and they take out a picture of Kevin Pratt from Gallagher and they say, who in the heck was that guy? Who was that guy? Because I don't remember him playing in the NBA. People get fooled so easily because of the herd mentality. Well, they're all doing this. Let's go do it. That's why you come to church. Because when you're able to decipher and recognize truth out of the word of God, all of a sudden when somebody's trying to fool you or take you down the wrong road, you say, ah! That's not what the Bible says. That does not match up with the word of God. So I'm going this way instead of that way. That's why you need to be in church. This church needs you. This church needs you. And just as much as this church needs you, your butt needs to be in church. It's a give and take. It's a give and take. Church, why do it? Because you need it, and this church needs you. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in church. We want to thank you, Lord, for giving us your word, for giving us your truth, that we can recognize when people are trying to fool us. Thank you, Lord, that we have the ability to serve and be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We can serve and be helpers within the church because it's everlasting what we do for your kingdom. It's everlasting. Thank you, Lord, that you give us Spring Court Bible Church. Thank you, Lord, for the different churches around this world that are still preaching truth. May you bless each and every one. And if you sit here today and you say, you know, Pastor Matt, you're talking about truth. Well, I've heard it numerous, numerous times, but I've never taken that step of salvation. And today I want to do it. Well, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now where you sit. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to mean it. No one else can hear you but God can. I want you to say this. Dear Lord, today I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive my sins, save my soul, take me to heaven when I die. Make me the type of person you want me to be. If you prayed that prayer today and you meant it, you meant it, it wasn't just words. 
So nobody looking around, I want you to put your hand up and let God know you prayed that prayer today. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. You put it down. I see that hand. You put it down. Lord, we want to thank you for this little church in Springport. Someday, Lord, we hope that as it grows, that we're a church that you're still proud of because we're still doing it how you want it done. Encourage people to get to church. Encourage people to be in church. Because that's what you instruct us to do. Give us safety as we travel home. Watch over us this week. In your heavenly holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember our motto at the church, bringing the unchanging truth of Jesus to an ever-changing world. Have a great, great week, everybody. Take care. Thank you.